As a mom, you might think that you have all the time in the world left to add to your child's memory box or to be the mom that you want them to remember having during their childhood. Well, I'm here to tell you that sadly, this isn't the case. But don't get discouraged. Stick around because I'm going to share with you three messages I have recently been inspired with on how to turn this sobering reality into the true blessing that it is. Hey there, Shannon here with Catholic Carolina Mom. If you're new to my page, thank you so much for being here and welcome. I'm a Catholic mom of five who creates videos to encourage other Catholic moms to know and fully believe that regardless of what you're doing, whether it's decorating your home, raising your kids, or working out, that you can do it fully Catholic and all for God. So if you're like me and most moms, I would, I would guess, you may feel like you have all this time to have your children under your roof and so you don't really, there's no sense of urgency to try to do even practical things like finish decorating their room a certain way or taking a certain family trip that you want to go on while they're still young and under your roof. Or maybe there are more virtuous things like growing in the virtues of joy. Maybe you want to be more joyful or maybe you would like to have more patience and you think, oh, I'll do that one day. I'll, I'll, I have all the time in the world to be more joyful or be more patient. But sadly, this just isn't the case. I have my third child um, coming up to his entering college phase in life and he recently just graduated. And recently I was driving home and I was struck with this intense realization that time is up, that I've just run out of time, and that as of August, there will be no more adding to his childhood memories, that that box will slowly be closed. And this was a really profound reality. In you know, with my older daughter, I didn't have that. I, it was definitely a bittersweet time. I was really sad. You know, just I wasn't going to see her anymore. And it was more of just being really concerned that had I done enough, had I taught her all the things that she needed to know about the real world, and did she know how to get certain stains out of her clothes, and did she know how to pump gas in her car, and how to write a check, and you know, it was getting all the lists and taking her through this crash course on Home Economics 101 and at least the cliff notes on the real world. But with my son, I definitely still had that bittersweet feeling, and I still do, which I'm really, really sad to see him grow out of his childhood and go off into the world and to not wake up every day and see him here. But I'm also joyful and so excited to see what the Lord does with his life and just to see who he becomes. Um, so I still have those feelings, but it's not so much the, did I prepare him well? Does he know everything? Um, not that practical worry. It is more of, wow, I've just run out of time. And he can no longer add to his childhood memories. I can no longer change the mom that he remembers in his childhood. So when he's talking to his roommate at college, it is what it is in terms of this is how my childhood was or this is how my mom was growing up. And when he talks to his future spouse in, I don't know, 40 years from now, um, it, it isn't going to change. Now it, there is some sense of finality to his childhood memories are done. And I kind of just sat with that for a minute. And then I was faced with really two choices. Number one, I could sit in my sadness. I could feel totally defeated and just kind of sit in gloom. Like I had failed my child somehow and I just hadn't been good enough as a mom. Or obviously the superior choice is to savor the time that I have left and use the time wisely, not just with my child who's going to college, but with my younger children. 
to use this time to change my parenting style, to be the parent I want my children to remember, and to live every day striving towards that and in developing the virtues that I want to develop, in doing the practical things that I feel like it's too late for my child going to college, I can still try to do those things with my younger children. I can make sure to use the time well that I have left with them. Even if it's silly things like decorating their room or going on a certain trip while they're here at home. I want to use the time I have left with my children under my roof to be the devout, peaceful, Catholic mom that I want my children to remember. So the better choice is clear. So I felt a calling to share this with you. And regardless of what stage of mothering you're in, whether you also have a senior headed off to college or out in the real world soon, you have only younger children, or you're praying that one day God will bless you with children, I have three messages to share with you. The first message is to cherish and savor the time that you have left with your children in your home and to be the childhood mom that you want them to remember. Whether you have days, weeks, months, or even years left with your child in your home, it's so important to remember to live each moment to the fullest and you really will have no regrets in the future. And I know we say that a lot, but it's so true. Remember that other things can be put off until later because they don't have an expiration date. But your child's childhood memories and their childhood, it does, sadly. And that's why it's so important to make the choice to, you know, add to their memories and do those things and, and work on yourself in the areas that you wanna work on as a mom while they're still young because it will go by so quickly. Message number two, trust that God has made you your child's mother for a reason. And know that God doesn't make mistakes. It's no accident that you are your child's mother. And as it says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse six, train up your child in the way they should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We know sadly that sometimes this isn't the case, and Father Mike Schmitz in his Bible in a Year podcast even talked about this, saying that sometimes, unfortunately, our children choose to turn away from their faith and what we've taught them in their youth. And that can be a really, really difficult thing. But it's our job as their moms to lay a really strong foundation when they're little. And if you've done that, now is your time, as your child goes off in the real world, to trust that God will take that foundation and use it to help guide them to become the responsible, faith-filled young adults that you hope for. And it may take years, it may take a long time, and you may wanna think, oh, I failed, and you know, they're struggling with this or that, but you need to really trust that you did your part, give yourself some grace, and trust that your child was your child for a reason and that you did a good job during their childhood and that they will remember those good memories. As moms, we're often our own worst critic and instead of listening to Satan's whispers in our ears, don't do that, that we're not a good enough mom and that our child's gonna remember all of the bad things we did as a mom where we failed them and we were late to pick them up from soccer or we lost our patience and yelled at something so trivial and something we were honestly embarrassed about later. We need to fully trust that we were our child's mom for a reason and that they will remember the good memories from their upbringing. So don't believe for a second that you were not a good enough mom during your child's childhood and trust in the fact that you you were a good mom you are a good mom so trust is just really really important trust that god has guided you as a mom and he will continue to guide you and also pray to god for graces to get past any temptations to think those thoughts and also to get through this difficult time because it is a really sad and bittersweet time. And so we definitely need, need those graces from God. 
And really, the fact that you're on this video trying to find ways to be a better mom really shows you're a great mom. Message number three, be thankful that God has allowed you to share in raising your child. He has given us this incredible vocation of being a mom. And so remember to pray many, many, many prayers of Thanksgiving for allowing you to have that vocation of being a mom to your child. Being a mom is a privilege, it's not a right. And so every day we should be very thankful to God for that. It's so important to have a grateful heart. And by choosing to focus on the positive things we can learn from when a chapter closes in our child's life, um, and they're headed off into the real world, whether that's college or working or something else, we're not just telling God our thanks, but we show God our thanks through our actions, through choosing to look at the positive things and just seize every moment. Take some comfort and a healthy dose of pride in realizing that your child is spreading their wings to fly, the wings God chose you to strengthen, not just anyone else, but you specifically. That's pretty awesome if you really think about that. And like a beautiful quote from an author named Rochelle B. Weinstein says, a mother's job is to teach her children not to need her anymore. The hardest part of that job is accepting success. It's so true. And based on my experience, the best thing to do to get through this roller coaster of mothering and letting our children go is to stay super close to God. And one of my favorite and very simple but profound prayers that I find myself saying often during these tough and challenging times is, Jesus, be my peace. And if you just repeat that to yourself in times like this, he will step in. He is so good. And um, there is just no peace or comfort like the peace and comfort of Jesus. So with that, if you like my video and would like to continue sharing and fellowship with me in all areas of Catholic mom life, please hit the subscribe button below. And also, if you know other moms who would benefit from or enjoy these videos, please share my page with them. Thank you so much for being here. And remember, whether you're decorating your home, raising your kids, or working out, you can do it fully Catholic and all for God. Blessings to you, Catholic mom. See you next time.